So today what we have on the bench is this Milwaukee 8.0 high output. This is a pack that I bought broken and I've charged it up to do a repair video on. But I've had a package come in today and I want to get right to this. This stems from the video I posted a few days ago about the M18 HD12 and the 21700 cells that it has in it. It is the INR 21700-40T. So we talked about the 8 amp hour having the same cells. And I also talked about in that video that Amazon seems to have a deal on the 8 amp hour high output pack. It does seem too good to be true. It's under $100 and they sell over a thousand a week it looks like. And if you look at the reviews it's got a lot of five star reviews. People saying that it's actually a legitimate 8.0 Milwaukee pack and they've had good luck with it and from appearance it looks just like one. So typically I wouldn't even try it but I did say on video I would buy one so we could check it out and see for ourselves. So the box is all beat up, but it's a Milwaukee batter after all. It'll take a beating as we open this up. I'm very surprised to see that it's just in the retail packaging. I wasn't expecting that. I think several reviews said it was in a little bag, like they had bought them in bulk. And that's what I was expecting to see, but... Right up... Mm -mm. That does not look good there. Let's keep going. The package is very impressive with the part number on it. All the Milwaukee trademark stuff. I'm a little bit surprised by the laminated packaging. Usually everything's sealed up and, you know, has the seam from the um, ultrasonic weld around the edges. This is more like the older laminated type, but I'm just going to put a few score marks here and see how hard it is to rip. I'm not cutting all the way through all of it. And it's surprisingly strong. It doesn't just rip right open like I thought it would. I'm having to cut all the sides. As you can see here, it's pretty tough plastic. We even have a little theft deterrent tag. We have the Milwaukee instructions on the bottom. We got the laser etch date and information here. Very impressive. I still can't get over these lights. Let me know in the comments if you see something with the lights at this point also. I'm just going to go ahead and throw this on the charger so it'll be fully charged when we come back for more testing. Back now fully charged. And the button is actually kind of hard to push for a Milwaukee battery. I'm having to hit the right angle here. As mentioned earlier, I got this one here. Um, it's just the case. I've got it out doing some testing on it at the moment, but these are both supposed to be the same model battery. They're both the 8.0 high output, but you see how the bars from Milwaukee always go from left to right and step through, and these do more like the aftermarket boards. They all light up at the same time, which for all I know, maybe Milwaukee did make a change. I don't know. going to bring over the postage scales here and Throw them on the scales. Two pounds and a little over two, 2.2, 2 2.4 ounces. So right at two pounds, two ounces. We throw this up here. Let me put the case as well. So we're getting two pounds and six ounces, 6.2. And actually, I don't even have the screws. I should have put them inside of the housing, but I really don't have to. It's already four ounces heavier without the screws. So the evidence is kind of right in front of us there. See, that's the four screws. I know they don't weigh a lot, but anyway, if anything, I've taken weight away from that one. And again, this one was two pounds and two ounces. So yeah, almost exactly four ounces difference. So the LED lights, the push button, and now the weight. So even though the appearance is good, this ain't looking good. While I'm at it, I might as well measure the battery pack here that I'm calling the Beast. This is a 10 amp hour pack that I put together using the 12 amp hour high output battery uh, case that I had left over from the last video. I'm going to do a video on this pack as well if enough people are interested in it. And it's not lighting up because I just plugged up the battery packs. If I throw this on the charger and let it start charging, it'll wake up the BMS board just like we talked about in that last video. And now there we go, our fuel gauge works. And yes, yeah, a beast, but um, Milwaukee doesn't even have a 10 amp hour power stack battery out, the LiPo pack. 
So I just thought I'd create one just for a little fun and having a high output, real high current output pack. If we look at the weight here, just for curiosity, we're right at three pounds and 10 ounces. I'll pause the video here just to show you a little bit about how it's put together. I can simply remove these lipo packs. So that's the reason I did this is hopefully this pack will never have to be taken apart again. I can get 10 amp hours like so. I got the BMS board with silicone and covered with a, a rubber mat and a piece of foam in there to help keep separation and also keep the board up in place and they really do fit perfectly and with that foam I can slide it in with one finger and I simply hook up the balance leads and you could possibly do both here um, I usually use a little monitor on the other balance lead if I'm using it or charging it you could also charge this with a hobby charger of course individually so you don't have to use this as a 10 amp hour it could be a 5 amp hour you could put shorter packs in here if you don't like it sticking out like this I did the 10 amp hour because that's what I wanted to do for this pack. And yeah, it's a beast, all right. I was hoping Tort Test Channel might want to get this pack and use it for testing before Milwaukee even comes out with their 10 amp hour pack. But I haven't heard back from uh, TTC at this time. If that's something you would like to see, reach out to TTC for me as well. And let me know in the comments if you do want to see this pack build, even though I just showed a brief overview of it. I'm just going to set this aside and charge, but before I do, let me show you even this pack left to right. You see how the LEDs light up? Every Milwaukee pack I've ever had does that. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'll be surprised if it's T10 Torx screws, but it actually is. It is T10 Torx screws just like the Milwaukee. And they're not the little sharp pointed plastic screws like the aftermarket kits either. But now there is a difference. I'll zoom in here so you can see it. Even the length is close, but these do have a shank. And I've never seen any other Milwaukee battery pack with a, a shank close to the head. So hopefully you can tell the difference there. I can see it. It's not very noticeable and you can't tell it till you take them out. That's the third difference so far. Well, there you go. This definitely is not a Milwaukee board. It's in there pretty tight. I don't see any screws, but there they are side by side. The board layout is not even close. It just does the same function. If I bring over aftermarket board for like a five amp hour, you see that red push button that's very common with these aftermarket boards and a similar design. Matter of fact, I just got in the eight amp hour kit that I mentioned in the last video also, and I think it has the same type top to it. So let's see. This is the 10 cell 21700s that I was talking about. I think this kit's $25. So I want to compare the board and the top and wow, look at that. Uh, that's identical. So the one we just bought off of Amazon is identical to the aftermarket board. If I can get the camera to focus here. Of course, the kit I just bought is not built yet. I can do a video on that, but I haven't built it yet. See, it's going to look very similar, but it does have the, um, the little sharp pointed screw. That is a little different, but it's unreal how close this pack looks otherwise. Hard to get out. Let me get a flat screwdriver. Gently pry on this pack. There we go. We do have 21700 cells, so it's like it's almost identical to that kit we bought. 100% not a Milwaukee pack. No marking on the sales. And that was the first giveaway right here, this push button and the fuel gauge. It's harder to press and make contact than normal. And of course, all LEDs lighting up at the same time was a pretty good giveaway. So hint, hint, if yours is doing that, you probably got a fake one also. Let's look under here and that is soldered. It's a nice looking job, but um, Milwaukee does not do that. I mean, overall, it's not a bad build quality, not a bad looking pack, but it's not what I ordered. So unreal how hard they tried to make this look just like a Milwaukee on the outside. Even the label and the etching is uh, unreal. So curious now if the aftermarket top I have a fit on here, like it's basically the same case. So this is the aftermarket eight amp hour, the little kit top, and it does, it fits right on there. So 
The screw threads itself might not be the same, but it is the same top. And we can see the difference with the authentic Milwaukee right off the way they got the extra supports sticking up, interlocks into the top from the bottom half of the housing. That's the extra strength they put on the heavy duty cases. And of course, even without that, it still doesn't quite line up right. There's some pieces in the back that's different. The front is more similar, but definitely see a big difference there. So here's the two side by side, the authentic Milwaukee on the right, the fake one we just bought from Amazon on the left. A lot of attention to detail to make this fake. There's the two side view with the very evident Samsung cells on the authentic Milwaukee. I'm just going to put this back together and we'll do a capacity test before we end the video. I need to mark this as fake also so I don't get it mixed up with some of mine. It's actually my best looking pack right now, <laughs> but that's subject to change after some use. Yeah, and we're back now. You can see I've marked it. I put an F on it and I put fake in more than one spot on the battery to keep it separated. So I got this feeding into my electronic load tester and I had the cutoff set for 13.5 volts. So I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and 2.7 volts per cell average. And we're charged up the 20.67 volts. One thing I have to do is set my current setting at the very top and going to go over and go up to one, two, three, probably at least four amps. Well, that would take two hours. Let's go to five. I'm going to be somewhere in two hours. So let's go five amps. Turn it on and you see we were out at 100 watts of power. So we should be fine. I think five amps is fair on an eight amp hour pack. And I'll come back and check on it in about an hour and a half. And I'll do this other eight amp hour after I repair it in another video. So I didn't make it back obviously before it cut off because it cut off in less than an hour and 10 minutes. So right at 5,800 milliamp hours. So this is barely a six amp hour pack. So it must be 3,000 milliamp hour cells in it. And that's pulling all the way down to 13.5 volts, which is a little bit more than Milwaukee they cut it off a little after like three volts, 2.9 volts per cell. In Milwaukee's boards, they usually shut them down. So there you have it. This Amazon deal of less than a hundred bucks for this eight amp hour, not so much. It is not a legitimate Milwaukee battery. If something seems too good to be true, it usually is. This is no exception. So this is the same battery pulled up today um, as I'm editing this video. They have been letting the price fluctuate a little bit. This is the same pack. As you can see here, I'm showing the seller. It still got the excellent reviews of 4.8 average stars. Over a thousand bought the past week. And yeah, don't fall for it. It says it's the real Milwaukee 4811 1880, but it's not. And don't get me wrong. We, we know that there's aftermarket stuff out there and and I actually kind of like it. it. It does make competition and it also gives us another option. And it's always going to be a cheaper option. You might sacrifice some quality, but I do like having the option whether you take it or you don't. I like having the option. I think it keeps the companies on their toes. And I think it also will always give us another avenue if, if that platform ever changes or they don't make it anymore. It's always good to have an aftermarket out there for them to, um, to possibly keep batteries going long after its useful life in the consumer market for new sales as things get more obsolete. I know it doesn't matter at this point in time. These will still be around for a long time, but speaking in general terms, it's also good to have um, aftermarket stuff available. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to have some links down in this video of some useful tools and items I find very helpful on my workbench, just like my battery capacity tester, the screwdriver I use to take the things apart. Any of these links you click on are affiliate links and they help support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching and God bless.